Hello folks, I am Georgios Papadopoulos and welcome to this video on COAP message format. COAP stands for Constraint Application Protocol and it is defined in RFC 7252 standard. Now, this video is just one in a much longer series of tutorial videos on COAP. So, if that interests you, you should subscribe and check out the rest of the videos as well. Here is the co-op message format as defined in RFC 7252. A co-op message is encoded in a simple binary format, and it starts with a fixed size 4-byte header that may be followed by compact binary options and a payload. This message format is shared by requests and responses. In this video, we are going to analyze the co-op message format field by field. The fields in the header are defined as follows. The first field is the version, and it consists of two bits and indicates the co-op version number. This version field must be set to 1 when this specification is implemented, while the rest of the values are reserved for future versions. Finally, messages that come with unknown version number must be ignored. The next field is the type. It consists of two bits and indicates the type of the message. More specifically, it indicates if this message is of type confirmable, non-confirmable, acknowledgement or reset. Next, we have the token length field. It consists of four bits and indicates the length of the variable length token field, which may be 0 to 8 bytes in length. Note that length 9 to 15 bytes are reserved, and therefore they must not be sent and must be processed as a message format error. The next field is the code. It consists of 8 bits and indicates the request response code. This 8-bit field is split into two subfields. The three most significant bits indicate the class, while the five least significant bits indicate the detail or the code. The entire code is typically communicated in the form uh, c.dd, where c is a digit from 0 to 7 and indicates the class subfield, and dd are two digits from 00, 00 to 31 and indicates the detail subfield. The class can indicate a request, a success response, a client error response, or a server error response while the special case 0.00, .00 indicates an empty message. Finally, all other class values are reserved. Now, if the class subfield is a request, then the code subfield indicates the request methods such as get, post, put, delete. While in case uh, of a response class, the code subfield indicates a response code such as created, deleted, valid, when, for example, the code is a success response. The next field is the message ID. It consists of 16 bits and it is used to detect message duplication and optionally to enable a reliable message transmission. To do so, the message of type acknowledgement resets are matched to messages of type confirmable, non-confirmable. For example, a reliable message transmission is provided by marking the message as confirmable. Now, to confirm that a specific confirmable message arrived, the server transmits back an acknowledgement with the same message ID from the corresponding client. However, if the server is not at all able to process a confirmable message, it replies with a reset message instead of an acknowledgement. Finally, a message that doesn't require a reliable transmission, then this message is marked as non-confirmable. Now, such messages are not acknowledged, but still a message ID is included for duplicated detection. To continue with the message format, the header is followed by the token value, which may be 0 to 8 bytes as given by the token length field. The token value is used to match a response with a request. To better understand the difference between message ID and token, here is an example of a GET request with a separate response. Every request carries a token whose value was generated by the client. If the server is not able to respond immediately to a request carried in a confirmable message, 
It simply responds with an empty acknowledgement message so that the client can stop retransmitting the request. It is important to keep in mind that matching requests and responses is not done with the message ID because a response may be sent in a different message than the acknowledgement, which uses the message ID for matching. When the response is ready, the server sends it in a new confirmable message and without modifying the token value. Finally, this new confirmable message in turn needs to be acknowledged by the client. Following the token comes a sequence of zero or more co-op options in type length value or TLV format in which different kinds of information could be sent. An option can be followed by the end of the message, by another option or by the payload which is prefixed by the payload marker. Now, the length of the payload is implied by the datagram length. And that's all folks. Thank you for watching and if you have enjoyed this video, you should subscribe and check out the rest of the videos on Coop.